Good morning, guys. I hope you all are doing well. It's Angel here. Listen, I have a testimony to share. And today, I'm kind of probably going to be like um, flooding your timelines today because I have a few videos that I'm working on and I need to put them out. But I want to share this testimony with you guys this morning. I'm going to be transparent with you all because, you know, I, I like to be completely honest. I know there's somebody out there that is dealing with the same exact situation or has been through the same situation or what have you and is going to bless somebody and help somebody. So let me get to it. So the Lord has been dealing with me about tithes, right? And before you click off, I'm not asking for money or anything. <laughs> okay, just listen, hear me out. Hear me out because God just took care of me. Just hear me out. This is for somebody, okay? This is for somebody. So um, I've been getting attacked. I have, but the Lord has been allowing it, right? Um, and it's because he taught me a valuable lesson and it was the best thing that he could have ever done. I'm so grateful for that lesson. Yes, I was stressed out. I was, but my God, God is so good. I, you know, I really appreciate the lessons that he gives me. So much wisdom is gained after each lesson. And I can share it with you all. So listen, right? I've been getting attacked. I know I've been under attack because of the dreams I've been having, the confirmation I've been getting. But the Lord has been telling me, like, he has my back. Just have faith. So you all know um, what I do. Well, some of you all know what I do. I'm a nurse and I'm an agency nurse, which means I'm not staffed with anybody. I literally only pick up when a facility is in need. I fill in wherever there's a shortage, Okay. So lately I have been getting, now mind you, I've been doing this for about three years now, but lately I have been financially getting attacked and the Lord is calling me to do some things that requires finances. So I'm like, well, dad, how is this going to happen? Because it's like, you're, you're telling me I need to do this now when I'm in a season of, of, of lack a little bit financially i've been getting attacked honestly in other ways too but i've been getting attacked financially like never before like it's been a long time since i've been attacked in this way so um my shifts have been getting canceled um i filled out some apps to become staff i've you know no word back i'm like getting scared i have two kids and the Lord is telling me to do something and I want to be obedient. But yet it's like, well, dad, you, you have to make a way for me. You want me to do this. You, you have to make a way for me because right now it's looking crazy. So I'm in warfare, praying and, you know, believing that the Lord is going to make a way. But he he did not rush to make a way because it was a lesson I needed to learn. I'm going to be honest, guys. OK, don't judge me. I'm human. So. There were a few situations where I had the opportunity to give and I did not. Why? Because I myself am financially strapped. So in my mind, man, if I give this, I'm, it's, it's just going to be way worse. I need to buy groceries and I can't afford. I wish I could give. The only thing I could do is pray. I wish I can give, but I cannot. No, no, no. The Lord had really ministered to my spirit that you know he he kept bringing this particular person and situation to me because I was supposed to give and I'm like man it's like oh, I don't have it to give but the Lord wanted me to act on faith he wanted me to act on faith and when I finally understood that, I said, oh, OK, I keep saying this because the Lord is dad is telling me, no, you know what you're supposed to do. So I acted upon faith and I gave um, to this person when I was in a situation where I, I didn't have it. OK, so I gave to this person and um Guess what happened, guys? I'm I'm being so honest. Guess what happened? All of a sudden, I'm picking up shifts again. I'm not getting canceled anymore. 
all of a sudden random refunds are coming to me out the woodwork. <laughs> I mean, when I say I want to just holler right now of the goodness, I want to holler about the goodness of the Lord because he taught me such a valuable lesson. Okay. I did not activate my faith in what the Lord told me. Okay. And what is that? He will never, he will never let his children drown. Okay. He will never, ever let us drown. And it's not that I thought that he would. I, I, I believed and had faith that he would fix the situation and I would come out of it. But a part of my faith, a part of activating my faith was continuing to give even when I didn't have it. Not waiting for him to come through and knowing that he would. That's, that's not the only way to activate your faith. It's giving when you don't have it that is a the biggest way to show the lord that you have faith so when i was obedient and i gave in this in a situation where it really would have did me damage to give what he was asking me to give i did it anyway and instantly guys the floodgates and you know what god so you all know you know, the Lord speaks to me through scripture and music. And just like you wake up and you hear a song in your in your head and it just it sticks with you and it resonates with your spirit and you know deep down it's a message. He does that with scripture. He'll randomly drop a scripture in my spirit. It will always answer a question that I had or something that was on my heart. <laughs> God is so good. And it could be the same exact scripture that he gives me and he'll give me a different revelation. That's why they say the Bible is the true living word. It is living. It, it is not just something that you read and, and then you move on and never go back to it. No, because you get a different revelation every time. The Lord literally speaks to me through these words and I get different messages each time. Okay. A different understanding, a deeper understanding. And depending on a circumstance, it, it means a different thing, you know? So I kept hearing the Lord say, Luke, Luke five, verse seven, Luke five, verse seven. And I say, okay, dad, I go and open my Bible. Okay. You know, I have the NLT. So I go to the verse and it says a shout for help brought their partners in the boat. And soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. <laughs> Abundance. I said, oh my good. And, th and that was dad confirming because I was, I'm telling you, guys, y'all don't know. I was in warfare prayer. Okay. I was, I was getting attacked and the Lord was allowing it because he wanted to, he knew he was going to save me, but he wanted me to get it. He wanted me to understand this lesson. Okay. And so when he sent me to this scripture, I knew instantly what he was saying because I was just thanking him for the shifts that I've been able to pick up. They weren't getting canceled. I'm like, oh my gosh, a weight was lifted off my shoulder over a situation that I had. And I'm starting to see like, you know, how he has literally just saved me. He was waiting for me to, to learn that lesson on faith when I gave instantly instantly guys it wasn't like oh weeks later months later instantly dad opened the floodgates for me and when he sent me to that scripture i was already celebrating and hollering and thank thanking the lord that i was able to to work again consistently like before no it didn't end there it didn't end there i'm gonna give my testimony the lord said Go and this is so random. I have not been on my account in literally probably nine or ten months. He said, Go on to your music account. It's an account that I use. Um, so you guys know I used to do music when I was in the world. I have some worldly songs that are out on Spotify and, and stuff like that. So I have not been on this account because I'm starting fresh. Um, I'm going to be releasing gospel music and love music for the Lord. Tasteful, godly love music and um, gospel music. But I have to be led by the Lord. I wanted to start new because I'm new. The Lord has renewed my spirit, renewed my mind. I'm a new creature. So 
I, I don't want anything to do with that account. But the Lord told me, go log into that account. So I logged into the account. And he said, check, check your balance. Guys, do you know when I say God is so good, he will never, ever leave you stranded. It was money there that I did not know was there. And the Lord was telling me in that lesson, I will never leave or forsake you. If I allow something, it is for the better. It is for you. It is for a greater purpose that will benefit you always. If I allow warfare, if I allow, if you are in the right standing with me, you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. And I allow you to be inflicted. It is either a lesson. It is something I need you to learn or it's for growth. It's always going to be for the better. Okay. Always because I love you. I love you. When I tell you I love you, what does a person do that loves you? They want the best for you. So if I'm allowing this infliction, if I'm allowing this affliction, it's because I need you to learn a lesson. And I learned. And I thank you, Father. I learned. Okay? So acting in faith is not just waiting for him to come through. It is doing everything he asks you to do, even when it doesn't make sense, even when you feel like you are not in position. If he's telling you to do it, just do it, okay? Now, I did not activate my faith because I was I was moving in fear. I was moving in fear. A lot of you all um, look to me for advice and um, guidance and I thank the Lord that he put me in such a position, but I have to be transparent with you guys. I fall too. I fall short as well. I'm human. And as long as I'm in this flesh, there will always be a part of me that will fall short in some type of way. Although I'm living righteously, striving to live righteously, striving to do all the right things, there was still things that I was not doing right in the sight of the Lord. I was acting on fear. No, I didn't have the money, to be honest. If I gave, a person with a carnal mind would have thought I was crazy because I was not in the position. And I I just, yeah. But the Lord was saying, if you believe in what I told you, that I'm going to rescue you and I will come and I will never forsake you. I will never forsake you. Then why are you operating with this mind frame why are you operating in fear that was the lesson he taught me okay there were times in the past where I was a little strapped and I still gave but he wants to see you still give in a situation where you're more than a little strapped where you really cannot it's detrimental if you give this what he what what you feel like you want to give if you give it and it's a detrimental situation if you give it he wants to see that you will still do it Anyway, that was the lesson he taught me because as soon as I got it, dad, you're allowing this. It's been going on so long because I still haven't learned. As soon as I got it and I acted on faith, he opened the floodgates. And that's my testimony to you guys. Okay. So I just wanted to share that. Oh my gosh. I just looked at the time. It's 12, 12. I just wanted to share that. Praise God. God is so good. Like I said, I'll be flooding your timelines. Guys, I have a video. Um, I have a lyrical breakdown for you guys, for those on the kingdom spouse journey. And I'll be posting that, um, prayerfully today. That is my goal. I'm, I'm sitting down and I'm, I'm, I'm finishing up these videos that I started and I'm going to post them. I also wanted to share a dream that I had guys. Um, this is referring to the topic of the, uh, spirit of bow, um, Jezebel and her witchcraft. I, I wanted to give you guys some, um, enlightenment on that situation. I had a very profound prophetic dream and um wanted to share that with you guys and yeah so stay tuned guys now here's the thing guys um we are under the new covenant okay the lord um i asked him i said lord do you want me to discuss this i know i'm gonna look crazy but hey 
I have to be obedient to the Lord. He taught me a lesson. A lot of times he wants me to give the lesson that he taught me to help others as well. If I keep it to myself, how will others learn? You know, so I said, well, Lord, do you want me to put this out? He sent me to Jeremiah 11. So I turned to Jeremiah 11 and it says, the Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, remind the people of Judah in Jerusalem about the terms of my covenant with them. Say to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Cursed is anyone who does not obey the terms of my covenant. For I said to your ancestors when I brought them out of the iron, out of the iron smelting furnace of Egypt. If you obey me and do whatever I command you, then you will be my people and I will be your God. I said this so I could keep my promise to your ancestors to give you a land flowing with milk and honey, the land you live in today. So that's what he sent me to. So I said, okay, amen. Thank you, Lord. So you want me to discuss it and discuss your covenant. The Lord is expecting us to keep his covenant, okay? Now we are under the new covenant and it's a debate going on, you know, about um, keeping, you know, about paying tithes. Um, and how we don't have to pay tithes anymore because we're under the new covenant, all right? But um, this is what the Lord has ministered to my spirit with this lesson. This is what he has told me. You are expected to give in an act of faith when the Lord is asking you to do so. Um, when the Lord is asking you to give, it is showing others the Lord's love. You are activating the spirit his spirit within you when you give to others and you are helping the Lord to give love to others through your acts. And when the Lord is telling you to give, that means you have to be obedient. It is still mandatory when he is putting it on your spirit to give. Also, he is expecting us to love our neighbor. And a lot of times that means giving. Um, you'll know when the Lord is pressing it on your spirit to give, okay? When he does so, don't act out of fear. Just be obedient always. And that is the lesson. And obey his covenant, all right? His covenant. Those terms are still, are still in place. And he'll bless you. You'll get <laughs> Trust and believe, guys. You'll get it back tenfold anyway. You know what I mean? But your heart has to be in the right place. I'm going to add this scripture as well. In Mark 12, 41 through 44. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put their money into treasury. And many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mitts, or mites, which made a quadrants. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Surely I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury for they all put in out of their abundance but she out of her poverty put in all that she had her whole livelihood all right that's the parable that jesus gave about tithes okay and giving um it's an act of faith guys it is an act of faith in god being able to test your heart so a mite in those days was a copper coin, and um, it's the smallest, it's like a penny, pretty much, all right? It's, it's, it's not even a whole penny, actually. So Jesus was saying, you know, because this poor woman gave out of her poverty, the poor widow was more obedient than the rich people because she gave out of her poverty, all right? She gave her whole livelihood which was less than a penny because she was obedient in her finances. God looked after her and, and gave her a lot of favor and blessings. Okay. So the point is that we have to be obedient in our giving. All right. Um, whether it's to the church offering, giving to homeless, giving to, um, whoever God is putting it on your heart to give to always just be obedient. Okay. Anyway, guys, I pray that this has blessed somebody. For someone, this is actually an answer for you. You might have been, you know, going through some financial difficulties and it could be the Lord teaching you a lesson on obedience. Okay. Um, 
maybe he has called you to be helpful to somebody or to give to somebody and you're refusing to do so because you're in a bad situation yourself but he just wants to see you in faith he wants to wants you to activate your faith in this moment okay that's for somebody not all of you some of you guys you, you this is not your issue and this word is not for you but for others this is going to help and bless somebody all right and I pray you all have a great day and I will talk to you soon. I love you all. God loves you so much more. Till next time.